Welcome back to our series on probability theory. I'm Mark Ledbetter. This is lecture video 21, part B, and we're in the second part of section 7-2 where we're talking about the standard normal distribution. Last time, um, we learned how to read the z-table, and we started uh, to learn how to find a probability um, using a z-score. And there are three types of problems this way. We went through the first, which was if... Um, where we're saying that there's some value, um, let's call it A, and we want to know what's the probability that Z is less than A. So the probability Z is less than A. We found that. That's easy to find in the table. So now, today, we're going to continue those three types, and we're going to start with an example and remember that there's several different ways we can ask the same question in this section. What, what proportion of a population, proportion of a population, what's the probability of one probability that A, which is one, randomly selected individual, Um, what proportion of the population, what's the area, I'm sorry, I don't know what happened there, the area under the standard normal curve, what's the, instead of proportion, we could ask percentage. So those are all ways that we could ask this same, uh, for the same value, the same answer. So, we're going to use each of those and make sure that uh, you see how you do this. But it, the the way you answer, the way you ask the question, it can be any of those ways. So, what proportion of the population of a standard or a standard normal population are above um, 1.58? So, standard normal population means that this is a z-score. So, we want the probability. I'll zoom in a little bit. The probability that Z is greater than, you need to know you're greater than versus less than. So Z is on the side that's bigger, so Z is greater than the point, which is smaller, uh, 1.58. Our table only has less than. No matter how much we want it to be greater than, it doesn't have that. So we have to use a property of the uh, probability distribution and the total probability under the standard normal curve is 1. So we're going to use what we call the complement or complement rule. And I think I briefly discovered, uh, discussed that back in Chapter 5, uh, that brief section on Chapter 5 that we covered. So I'm looking for the probability that z is greater than 1.58. Now if I look at my standard normal curve, remember that the mean is zero for this. Make sure you put a Z over here so that we know you're talking about the Z and not something else. And we want um, the probability of 1.58 that, that we're above 1.58 here. But that's not what we're going to find in the table. The table will have this value. So the value of the table and the probability we want so these two values together have to be 1, a total of 1. So to get this probability that z is greater than 1.58, we're going to have to subtract 1 minus, and over here is going to be probability z is less than um, 1.58. Sorry, that's a 1 there. So that's going to be the probability over here. That's how we write that. So this is 1 minus the probability that z is less than 1.58. So we've changed the sign here. These are different directions. Okay, And so we need to go and look up 1.58 in our z table. So we come over to our z table, and we go to the positive, because the positive 1.58. And I'm going to try to line this up with the bottom of the page so we can see. So 1.5 is here. And I need an 8 for the second decimal place. So I come across, and it's going to be this value here, 0.9429. So 
0.29 is the area or probability that goes with 1.58. And look at the picture. The picture says that our table entry is over here, not over here. Okay, so we go back to our uh, work here. And so we plug in for this, still 1 minus, and now I need 0.9429. And so I subtract that, and I get 0 0.0571. That is my answer for this. Let's do another one. But now, instead of doing greater than or less than, we're going to do between. So again, we don't have between in our table. That would be a very uh, difficult table to do. So all we have is less than. So what we're going to do is, um, and, and here I've worded the problem differently again, what is the probability that a randomly selected individual from a standard normal distribution has a value between 1 and 1.58? So in order to get this, we have to be clever. So I'm going to start with the 1.58 here. And if I look up that value, the table value, table value, it will be over here. And we just did that, but let's look at it again. So in this Z table, we go down to 1.5 over here. And we go all the way across until we get to 0.08 here. And where they intersect, that's the value. So 0.9429. So this is 0.9. Oops, sorry. I keep forgetting to do this. So, sorry about the uh, graphics there. So this is 0.9429. And notice that if I take and put a dotted line here where 1.0 is, let me zoom in. So this area, go back to blue, the area doesn't only include the area that we want, which is between, this is the area that we want, it also includes all the area to the left of 1. So I need to get rid of this area over here that's to the left of 1. I want to uh, subtract off this area, and what I have left will be what I want. So please make sure you take time to understand this. So again, the only thing, so now I'm going to look at 1 here. And the only thing I can find out about 1 is the probability that z is less than 1. This is my table entry. So I need to find this in my table. And so I go back to my z table. And now I'm going to look at 1.000. And uh, so what I get is 1, and point zero is here, and the, zero, the second 0 is up here. So this is the area I need, 0.8413. So this value over here will be 0.8413. So to find this value that I want up here, I want to point out that it's one the probability that z is less than 1.58, and that is what we found here. This table value was the probability that z is less than 1.58. So we took that area that's in blue, all that shaded area, and we subtracted off the area that's less than 1, which in this is the red, um, and we subtract those two values and we get 0 0.1016. This is the answer. Now, I want to point out that the signs here are always less than on this side. Just because these are less than, they're both less than, but z, of course, is greater than 1, and it's less than 1.58. But don't let that confuse you, because the only thing we have in our table is less than. Less than or equal to or less than. So... Um, it's always a less than sign over here, okay?
So we take the bigger number, subtract the smaller number. Bigger number minus smaller number. That's always the case. Always, oops, always, because probability is always positive. If you put down a negative value for probability, you won't get any partial credit whatsoever because you're telling me that you don't understand probability because probability is between 0 and 1. Only. It's never negative and it's never greater than 1. So I should never get an answer from you for probability that's less than 0 or greater than 1. So no negative probabilities and no probabilities greater than 1. If you've got a negative, you've probably reversed which one was supposed to be here and which one was supposed to be here. It's always the bigger minus the smaller. Okay, so that's the third type of problem that we can uh, answer when we're given a value and asked for a probability. So, remember to scan your lecture notes for the day um, that's listed on the course calendar. Um, make sure they're neat for you. Uh, you can have, let's see, if you have any questions, come to virtual office hours. If you cannot make it to virtual office hours and you want me to answer a question, then email me, email me pictures. So you should always have at least two pictures for your email. One, the problem. I know you all think I have these memorized, but I don't. So I do need uh, the problem in case I don't have access. And two, uh, your work so far. Oops. Your work so far. That way I can see what you're doing, how you're trying to approach the problem. And guess what? I'll be able to see where you're uh, heading off in the wrong direction or if you're going in the right direction. So I hope you will take care, and we will see you 